Good afternoon, everybody. So nice of you to uh, join me. Uh, if you visit my channel, please click like and uh, subscribe. I would appreciate it very much. Thank you so much. I did something a little bit different to start out with, and I don't know where I'm going to end up with this video. No. Um, I want to move my camera over just a little bit here. But I had a question. I wanted to know when the first humans uh, came to the earth. Thought just crossed my mind, so I don't know. I'm going with it. But it says here, planet earth has been around for over 4.5 billion years. But humans, for 99.998% at our planet's history, humans were nowhere to be found. Okay, let me scroll down here a little bit more. Bring my camera back up again, because I done lost it. There it is. Now, some of these words are hard for me to pronounce when it comes to those dinosaurs. I'll do the best I can, okay? <laughs> After an unbroken string of life on this planet, extending for over 4 billion years, the species Homo sapiens sapiens finally evolved. But prior to that, the stage was set by our evolutionary, evolutionary precursors. Numerous hominid ancestors are all competed for resources at the same time. Now, still surprisingly to many, the first humans came about even before the first Nathandrials, at least that we know of. Here's when the first humans arose. Okay, I gotta scroll down here a little bit. Ah, uh, that was too far, Betty. Okay, bring up the camera. Uh, by the time our planet was four billion years old, the rise of large plants and animals were just beginning. Complexity exploded around that time as the combination of multicellularities, sexual reproduction, and other genetic advices, advances brought about the Cambrian explosion. Many ev <laughs> evolutionary changes, I'll get it, hang in there folks, occurred over the next 500 million years with distinct events and selected pressures paving the way for new forms of life to rise and develop. Okay, now I've got to move something over here. There we go. Okay. Uh, 65 million years ago, a catastrophic asteroid strike wiped out not only the dinosaurs, but practically every animal weighing over 25 kgs, kilograms, excepting leatherback sea turtles and some crocodiles. This was Earth's most recent great mass extinction, and it left a large number of niches unfilled in its wake. Mammals rose to prominence in the aftermath, with the first humans arising less then, one million years ago, here's our story. 65 million years ago, a massive asteroid somewhere between 5 and 10 kilometers in diameter struck our planet. It kicked up a layer of dust that settled all over the world, a layer that can be found today in our planet's sedimentary, sedimentary rock. On the older side of that layer, fossils such as dinosaurs, Pitosauruses, Ichthysauruses, and Ple Plesiosauruses are abundant. Whew, I could spell them out for you if you want me to. <laughs> Especially that uh, Ichthysauruses, 
It's I C H T H Y O S A U R S. And then that Pteriosources and the Pleasure Sciosources. And that's P L E S I O S A U R S are abundant. Giant reptiles. Ammonites, 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 large classes of plants and animals all existed prior to that event, along with small flying birds and the tiny land-dwelling mammals. After that event, the mammals survived with no larger predators to stop them. They grew, diversified, and experienced a population explosion. Primates, rodents, lagomorphous, or L-A-G-O-M-O-R-P-H-S, lagomorphs, lagomorphs or something, and other forms of mammals, including placenital mammals, marsupials, and even the egg-laying mammals are all abundant at the start of the Cenozoic Epoch, and that is C E N E Z O I C E P O C H. Cenozoic Epoch, Epoch. Okay, and there's some pictures of those. Wow. Almost immediately, the primates began di diversifying. Diversifying, diversifying. Oh, boy, me and my words were not good lately. Whatever. Even further, 63 million years ago, just 2 million years ago, after the demise of the dinosaurs, they split into two groups. The dry nosed primates, known formally as the. Oh, haplorines. Haplorines which developed into modern monkeys and apes. The wet-nosed prima primates, known as the Streposurhians, and that is S-T-R-E-P-S-I-R-R-H-I-N-E-S. -R -R Streposurhians. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Which developed into modern lemurs and AAs. A-Y-E hyphen H-Y-E-S A-A's I-I's 58 million years ago another big change occurred. The Haplorhines H-A-P-L-O-R-R-H I-N-E-S experienced an interesting genetic split as the first novel and unique evaluationary branch became distant from the rest of the dry-nosed primates, the Tarizer, T-A-R-S-I-E-R, Tarizer. With its enormous eyes, it was uniquely well adapted to see at night. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, I wish you could see all these pictures. It's called, I'm on what is called the Big Think. And uh, I can subscribe. It's got subscribe up here. And uh, I will maybe do that later. The niche is now occupied was significantly different from the remaining groups of our ancestors that they evolved differently from the rest of their cousins from this point onwards. This type of evolutionary splitting occurs every so often and isn't unique to primates. Although we normally don't think very much about our distant cousins and how we developed once, they've split off from us. It isn't just Haplorahines, Haplorahines like us and our direct ancestors that underwent interesting phases of evaluation. Uh. 
all throughout the past 65 years, I think I'll go back to Trump and them. <laughs> just as it was before the time. I just wanted to take a break. You know, it gets old after a while, like I said a long time ago. And I just had to get away for a while. The various mammals, birds, plants, and other living orgasms, orga organisms, orgasm, oh Jesus, <laughs> organisms evolve together, forget it, forget it, forget it. <laughs> Evaluation is driven by environmental changes. <laughs> and that includes all the floral and the fiunal changes that occur on our planet. Oh, now he said a little cutie. Oh, there's so many cute pictures here. Wished I could show them all. Uh, 55 million years ago, a sudden rise in greenhouse gases caused the global average temperature to swiftly rise, wiping out many deep ocean animals and planets. plants. This transformation left many large, unfilled niches in the ocean, paving the way for Cetaceans, C-E-T-A-C-E-A-N-S, Cetaceans, whatever, the large oceanetic mammals to develop. Yeah, okay. No, no picture there. Okay, 50 million years ago, some of the even toad mammals began evolving into sea-dwelling creatures. The artodactyls, A-R-T-I-O-D-A-C-T-Y-L-S, may have all evolved from a single common ancestor, or may have evolved independently. Animals like Induhyus, I-N-D-O-H-Y-U-S, which dates to 48 million years ago, may have given rise to pro protocinetids, P-R-O-T-O-C-E-T-I-D-S, shallow water mammals that return to land to give birth. Pro, pro, protocinetids, Wished I could pronounce them correctly. Oh, look at that. Oh, bless its heart. You got to go to this site. It's called Big Think. Yeah, and uh, I just typed in the first humans to uh, come to Earth is what I just typed in. And this is where I ended up. And it's very educational. Very. Right around that time, 47 million years ago, the primate Darwinius, D-A-R-W-I-N-I-U-S, Masale, M-A-S-I-L-L-A-E, existed as the fossil Ida. Preserved from that time provides a spectacular example. Although this was originally touted, T-O-U-T-E-D, as a proverbial missing link in human evaluation, Ida is not a haplorhine like us. We're a haplorhine? H-A-P-L-O-R-R-H-I-N-E like us? I didn't know it was like that. Haplorhine. Haplorhine. Haplorhine like us. But a strip Stripserhine, a wet-nosed primate. Strep, S-T-R-E-P, Sir, S-I-R-R, Hine, H-E-N-E, wet-nosed primate. But another seven million years later, 40 million years ago, an important development occurred among the dry-nosed primates. The New World monkeys branched off. Humans and our ape ancestors are descended from Old World Monkeys. New World Monkeys are the first simians, S-I-M-I-A-N-S, or a higher primate, to a Luvinationary diverge from our lineage. We would go on to colonize most of South America, 
where they are still found in abundance today. Oh, isn't he beautiful? Oh, he's so beautiful. Oh my goodness. The old world monkeys continue to thrive and successfully occupy their niches while diversifying, diversifying in body size and physical features. 25 million years ago, the first apes evolved, splitting off from the remaining old world monkeys at that time. The apes defined by the complete lack of a tail of any type, but go on to give rise to many of the close relatives of humans that survive today, both the lesser apes and the great apes. The earliest ape to split off from the old world monkeys was the Gibeon, a lesser ape that first emerged 18 million years ago. Hmm. Sometime between 14 and 16 million years ago, the first great apes appeared with orangutan. Oh my goodness, orangutans branching off 14 million years ago. The orangutanians spread into southern Asia after this, while the other great apes remained in Africa. The largest primate ever, giant ophithecus. Giganticopithecus. Boy, that's a big word. G I G A N T O P I T H E C U S. First arose some nine million years ago, only becoming extinct a few hundred thousand years ago. Oh, and she's got her baby. Oh, you got to go see these pictures. They are just beautiful. Seven million years ago, gorillas branched off from the other great apes. They remain the largest of all of the surviving primates. The great apes split off in two directions. Six million years ago, with one direction giving rise to humanity's ancestors, the other branch giving rise to chimpanzees and bonobos. B-O-N-O-B-O-S. Bonobos. The chimpanzee bonobos branch remains unified for another four million years with our closest surviving relatives. The chimpanzees and bonobos, bonobos diverging from one another a mere two million years ago. Oh, bless her heart. But along the track of their direct ancestors, the developments were rapid and profound. 5.6 million years ago, the first truly bipedal ape, Ardipithecus, cus, A-R-D-I-P-I-T-H-E-C-U-S, arose. Ardipithecus arose. Although it's a controversial claim, controversial claim, the hand bones in the Ardipithecus show evidence of it being a transitional fossil between the earlier great apes and the later Australopithecines. A U S T R A L O P I T H E C I N E S. Where do they come up with those names? Lord have mercy. <laughs> Approximately four million years ago, the first Australopithecus evolved. The first members of the Hominidia subtribe, a, a taxonomic classification more specified than family, but less specified than genus, G-E-N-U-S. Shortly thereafter, the first evidence of the stone tool used appears presently at 3.4 to 3.7 million years ago of the first stone tool. Wow. Look at that. Look at that picture. That looks like a mommy. Yes, it does. Bless her heart. Cr a critical aloof evolution of ooh, evolutionary step happened a little more than two million years ago 
as our hominids ancestors faced food shortages. Does that sound familiar? Oh my, one evaluationary successful approach was to develop stronger jaws, which gave us the capability to eat foods like nuts that were otherwise inaccessible. But another approach was also successful in developing weaker jaws, larger brains, enabling us to access the food. While both groups survived for a time, the larger brain group were more adaptable to changes, they continued to survive. This is a evolutionary path that we think led to the development of the genus Homo, which first arose around 2.5 million years ago. Homo habilis, known colloquially as handyman, and that is C-O-L-L-O-Q, U-I-A-L-L-Y as handyman had larger brains than their Australopithecus counterparts and displayed far more widespread tool use. And it shows a diagram here of how everything evolved. Oh my goodness. About 1.9 million years ago, Homo erectus evolved. This human ancestor not only walked fully upright, but had much larger brains than Homo habilis, nearly twice as large on average. Homo erectus became the first direct human ancestor to leave Africa, first to display evidence of using fire. Homo habilis was likely driven to extinction more than a million years ago, as was the last Australopithecus. Across the world, New examples of the genius Homo emerged, including Homo antecessor in Europe, which may be an involved Hibilius or Erectus, or an early form of Heidel, Heide, Heide Lobergenius, about 1.2 million years ago, followed by Homo Heidelbergenius, some 600,000 years ago. Approximately 700 years ago, the earliest evidence for cooking appears about 500,000 years ago. The first evidence of clothing appears approximately 300,000 years ago. The first Homo sapiens, sapiens, S-A-P-I-E-N-S, anatomically, anatomically, modern humans arose along our other humanoid relatives, hominid relatives. It is unknown whether we descended directly from the Homo erectus, Hydeoburginius, or Antisessure, also Nathandrials, Nathandrials, Neanderthals, which came slightly later over 240,000 years ago. Most certainly came from Homo Hydeoburginius, Modern speech is thought to have risen almost as soon as Homo sapiens did. It took 13.8 billion years of cosmic history for the first human beings to arrive, and we did so relatively recently, just 300,000 years ago. 900.998% of the time that passed since the Big Bang had no human beings at all. Our entire species has only existed for the most recent 0.002% of the universe. Yet in that short time, we've managed to figure out the entire cosmetic story that led to our existence. Fortunately, the story won't end with us, as it is still being written. Ethan is on vacation. Please enjoy this older article from the Start with the Bang Archives. And that's the end of it. But boy, that is very educational. Awesome. Oh, that took a long time. It was a very long article. I hope you enjoy it. If you're interested in how we became to become, <laughs> I guess that's one way to put it. But uh, I'm going to say enjoy the rest of your day. God bless you. Stay safe. Bye for now.